Hey, where are all the women at? Walk with History is at the Battle of Bull Run to answer that question in Manassas, Virginia. I'm Jen of Walk With History, historian, museum professional, veteran, and I'm here to tell you about what were the women doing during the Battle of Bull, Bull Run. Now, there's a lot of history about Bull Run. This is the first battle of the Civil War taking place July 21st, 1861. This is where the Union and the Confederacy is going to clash for the very first time. This is where the Union thinks it's going to be a quick fight overdone, squash that Confederacy, and uh, we won't have to worry about this Southern uprising. Uh, it's gonna be a rude awakening for the Union. But what are women doing during this time? You know, we're gonna have over 5,000 casualties. We have espionage that's happening in D.C. at this time. Union General McDowell, who's been visiting Rose Greenhow in her home, and Rose Greenhow would say, how many troops should I be praying for in your first battle of, of the Union? And 3,000? And he's like, oh, more like 35,000. She's able to get that information to Beauregard. So you have women who are spies during this time. You have women who are fighting during this time. You have women who are disguising themselves as soldiers on both sides and actually part of the fight. You have women who have come here in support of their husbands and they end up nursing all the casualties and the people who die. There's over 5,000 casualties in this battle. This, this place is bloodied with bodies and people laying, and they're not ready for this. Nobody is ready for this. And so women step up as nurses and nursemaids and help with the burying and help with taking care of the casualties and the wounded. This battle is also known for spectators. So you get people out here who want to sit and watch and have picnics and enjoy the battle of Bull Run and, and watch the soldiers in their gallantry. Well, that quickly turns and those people end up running for their lives at one point, but there are women who are also a part of that. happening during this time is you have all these people who have enlisted in the Union right away and ready to fight, but they don't know how to fight. They don't know how to take orders. They don't know how to, to stand the line. They don't know how to become an infantry. And so at the first sign of battle, you get a lot of retreat. And this is what's going on. You get these officers in charge who are not military officers. They're political officers. They're buying their commissions. They're officers because they were politicians, not because they know anything about the military. Where on the Southern side, you get a lot more people who have gone to West Point and learned military training. And that's why you see the big statue of Stonewall Jackson off there in the distance. And we'll talk more about him. are going and joining the militaries on either side and they're left to stay in their homesteads and defend their land and you never know where a battle is going to take place in the Civil War and your house could be right in the middle and that's what happens to 84 year old Judith Henry this is her home she is bedridden She's in her home and the Confederacy goes into the attic to set up sharpshooters in her home. She tries to leave, her family puts her on a mattress and tries to get her out of here, but gets caught up in the battle, brings her back and the Union basically starts to hit this area with artillery and basically obliterates this home. And she is the first civilian casualty of the Civil War and it happens to be a woman. And you'll see a lot of this women in the homes. The homes are commandeered by either side of the militaries and they're forced to deal with that uh, interaction. So here she is, Judith Henry, 
and she is the widow who is at this home at the time. And this is her daughter. Her daughter was with her. When she passes, she's with her in this home. But uh, Miss Henry is buried right here in her front lawn. This is what the house looked like after. So you can see taking on that Union artillery just destroyed the home. And Tell you the story of Anne Etheridge. She'd gone off with her. Uh, she'd gone off to war with her husband James in 1861, uh, and he, she was here at the Battle of Bull Run, the first Battle of Bull Run, uh, and he deserted. <laughs> it's not funny, but what's funny is she stayed. He deserted. She stayed, serving as a battlefield medic with the Second and Third Michigan and eventually incorporated into the 5th Infantry Reg Re Regiment. She did more than tend the wounded. On two occasions, she rallied the troops at Chancellorville, riding alongside the line, urging soldiers to hold on, and at Spotsylvania, leading the retreating troops back into battle under hot fire. So she celebrated because she served under battle undisguised. She wore a dress. She was a woman. She's not pretending to, she's not pretending to hide as a man. Um, but they believe there are 400 women, including a Mary Livermore, who disguise themselves as men. Confederates, Union, meet here. Everyone's kind of wearing the same uniforms. No one knows who's who, really. And you have very unexperienced soldiers on both sides thinking it's going to be a quick battle. It's not a quick battle. The Union eventually, initially takes the hill, pushes the Confederacy back. So the Union rests on their laurels and takes a break. Well, in that break time, the Confederacy is able to get 20,000 more troops here and able to reignite their side. And every time they fight, um, every time that the Confederacy gets tired, their troops get tired, they're able to get a fresh group to go in and uh, take over for them. And they're able to push back the Union. They're able to win. This is a Confederacy win. And not only is this a Confederacy win, this battle does a lot to boost the morale of the Confederacy. You're gonna get Stonewall Jackson coming out of this battle. His name comes out of this battle. And you're gonna get um, just a real blow to the Union morale after this. Lincoln is going to dismiss the general in charge, uh, McDowell, because of the way he follied in this battle. And you're going to get him having to think about how to get more people into the Union Army, how to get them trained, how to get them distinguished as Union soldiers, knowing that this is not going to be a quick disagreement, this is not going to be quick skirmishes, this is going to be a civil war. One of the Civil War's most famous women is going to come out of this first battle of Bull Run. Claire Barton risked her life distributing supplies to soldiers. She, saw, she started off assisting the wounded at the first battle of Bull Run in July 1861. From then, throughout the war, she could be found on battlefields tending to the wounded on both sides. So you get women who are pretending to be men or, you know, dressing up as men so they can fight for their country. And one of them is a Jeannie Hodgers, who enlisted in the 95th Illinois, served for three years and participated in 40 battles. Her motive, I wanted excitement. She developed a reputation for being a daring soldier, evicting nerveless performances in combat situations and tired, tirelessness on the march. She returned to Illinois, lived out the next 50 years as a man, her gender revealed only when she became elderly and a victim of an automobile accident.
out of this battle of Bull Run, right, we have, you know, women finding their place in the Civil War, but we have, this is probably the most famous thing that comes out of this battle, the name, Stonewall Jackson. Because he's standing here on his horse, he doesn't move his troops, they stand solid, and one of his other generals of the South rallies the troops and says, look at him standing there like a stone wall. He becomes known as Stonewall Jackson. I don't know if it's smart or dumb to stand perfectly still like a stone wall. It lets your enemy know exactly where you are and exactly where they need to fire. But because it was successful and the Confederacy won this battle, this built such morale for the South still lives in infamy today. People still only know Stonewall Jackson. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone who knows his first name was Thomas. So this is the statue to him. Uh, and that's where he was. This is where his troops were. And this other pillar over here is the person who made that statement. Look at him standing there like a stone wall. Uh, it was General Bernard Elliott B of South Carolina, commander of the 3rd Brigade of the Shenandoah. He was killed here July 21st, 1861, so at the Battle of Bull Run. And just before his death, he rallied his troops. He gave the command, form, form, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. Rally behind the Virginians. So because this battle of Bull Run takes place 30 miles from Washington, it's close enough for U.S. senators and aristocrats to bring their families and their children and their wives to watch the battle. And like I said, they set up blankets and picnics and they want to watch the battle. They want to watch the soldiers fight. And when the Union starts to retreat, the Union gets scattered. The senators try to rally them back, be like, no, and they're like running over the picnic blankets and they're busting up the, you know, the baskets and the people are scared and they're trying to rally them back, but uh, it's unsuccessful. So another woman, woman I want to talk about is Katie Brownell. She helped the Union Army during the Civil War. And she went with her husband as he joined the Rhode Island Regiment. She trained with the soldiers. She fought in the battle and helped the injured. At the first battle of Bull Run, she held the flag high, even as Confederate bullets were flying. So someone must have fallen that held the flag. She went and grabbed it and held it high, even as Confederate bullets were flying. That's pretty cool. There are significant things that come out of this first battle of Bull Run. The name Stonewall Jackson. You're gonna get McDowell relieved of duty. The Union commander of the army relieved of duty. And McClellan is gonna take over. This is before they find Grant to lead the army. But these are the significant changes that are gonna come out of this. You have to remember the Confederacy is defending the railroad line to Richmond and the Union has printed in the newspaper on to Richmond. So that's why the South has come here to defend this railroad line and keep that those lines of, uh, of transportation open to Richmond. Turn the tides of what would have been an easy, quick victory for the Union at all. And that war weariness is going to trudge on for the next four years. But this is where you're also gonna get the first Memorial Day because these women are gonna be the first ones to adorn the graves of their lost and remember them uh, on one day every year and it's going to become a national holiday. As we leave Bull Run today, I just wanted to touch on, I'm always in awe of men and women who are brave and and stand up for what they believe in and fight for a cause, whether it's forced upon them or whether they volunteer for it. War is going to impact everybody during this time. Men, women, children, every class, every race. And what the women are doing during this time is very instrumental to the war. And whether it is being home or their homesteads coming under being commandeered by either side, whether they disguise themselves as men and fight, whether they, their identity as women and fight, 
whether they become nurses and aides, you're going to get the only female Medal of Honor recipient is going to come out of the Civil War. And just know that women are playing a part in this war just as much as the men. Thank you for joining me today on this Walk with History. I hope you enjoyed it. And on to my next Walk with History. Thank you.